believe that every human being has a natural right to leave the country he or she is born in and seek a better life in another. Did you hear what I just said to you? But that right has the same natural limit that all rights have. Jefferson put it so eloquently when he said, the limits drawn around us by the equal rights of others. So what does that mean? It means you do not have a right to immigrate to another country carrying a potentially deadly disease that could harm the people living there. You don't have a right to enter the country illegally and subvert its constitution. Most obviously, you don't have a right to immigrate into a country for the express purpose of killing its citizens or overthrowing the government. But yet this is precisely the kind of immigration our government is actively facilitating. I won't read you anymore. I won't. I've been warning you about the dangers posed by injudicious immigration policies for over 20 years. Now those dangers are accelerating exponentially with the progressive Islamist takeover. If we ever want to see our country again, we need to stop it now. In another decade, it might be too late. Prophetic words. You can have it. It's not that expensive. All profits go to the savage the 2016 Savage Scholarship Fund. So now let's go back to some of the key sound bites of the day, and I'll invite you to call 855-407-282. Let us listen to Senator Turbin Durbin of Michigan demanding that we take in 100,000 Syrian refugees in clip 03. The United States leads the world in financial assistance for the Syrian refugee effort. But we have a moral obligation to do that and more. I've called on the administration to accept 100,000 Syrian refugees. Allow me to put the 100,000 number in perspective. Germany has agreed to accept 800,000 of these Syrian refugees. Okay. You get the picture. You get the picture. Now, why does Turban Durban want 100,000 Syrian refugees? Why? Why do you think Turban Durban wants them? Bigger question for you, uh, the audience of the show, when I expose today what crony socialism is. Uh, it's a new phrase, by the way. No, you haven't heard it anywhere from the geniuses in radio. I invented it last night. I put the two words together. No bid contracts, grants to donors. Crony socialism. We also talked about al-Husseini, the Muslims and the Nazis in World War II. I showed you how the policies of exterminating the Jews was transplanted to the Middle East in World War II. I talked about how Hitler, I didn't even tell you this, but Hitler told his minions in the Middle East to change the words from anti-Semite to anti-Jewish. Did you know that? The same way the left has brainwashed your children into saying, I'm not anti-Semitic, I'm anti-Zionist. Do you understand it's a continuation of the same thread of hatred and evil? Okay, more when I come back right here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is. The savage nation. This earth in upheaval, worlds in collision. We're going through an upheaval like I've never seen in my life. Have you ever seen anything like it? You know, no one even analyzes why this is happening. Who caused it? One of them is running for office. Her name is Hillary Clinton, and no one mentions it. They have that Ted, that tenth-rate comedian, the billionaire from Brooklyn, Larry David, who went on Saturday Night Live to to allegedly ridicule Bernie Sanders when in fact it was to cover up Bernie Sanders socialism because they're cut from the same uh, challah they're cut from the same challah out of the same bakery you understand Larry David's a billionaire socialist he wants you to pay for everyone else and not get not to give a dime of his own money in my opinion but let's put him aside he's an insignificant comedian then they ridicule Hillary Clinton, allegedly, on Saturday Night Live, and they don't take on any of the serious issues, such as her causing the refugee crisis that the world has to deal with. Instead, they talk about email, shmemail, you know, that kind of nonsense. Again, they're very clever. Never, ever underestimate the mind of the illiberal. Never, ever, ever underestimate the mind of the illiberal. They're very clever. They run the media. They own the media. 
They control the media. They control the pollution and the violence that goes out to the whole world. Don't get me started on this topic because I'll go off on a tangent like a rocket. I happened to be scanning television last night to rest my poor fevered brain after yesterday's show. And lo and behold, HBO was rerunning that, that filthy comedian, David. And I watched one of the episodes, and I was amazed at how he attacked Christian, mock Christians. It was, a, it was one of his episodes where he thought he was adopted. Someone told him he was adopted. And he goes to the Midwest to meet what he, who he thought was his adoptive parents. And in one scene, he mocks Christians. And he says, oh, my God, I'm a Gentile. And shows them going, him going to church with them. Very clever how they recreated a church with actors. Very clever how they try to mock the average American family. I got to hand it to Larry David. He really has a knack going back a long while now to mock the average American. It's just amazing to me. Made a mockery of Christians. Made a mockery of the church. Made a mockery of everything decent in the country. And look at the money he made doing it. It's a very interesting phenomenon that when you mock everything that's decent, well, the Bible wrote about it. You know, say, so, so, well, where's the Bible? What did he make on that? What did God make on the Bible? That's what a guy like Larry would say with that creep friend of his. What did he make on the Bible? What did the prophets make? Did they make any money? They didn't live in Beverly Hills like us. They didn't eat in the finest restaurants. They didn't drive in fancy cars and get to tell presidents what to do. Who are these people, Jeremiah? What do they make? Well, they make nothing. What is that garbage you're reading? What Bible? You can spit on it. It means nothing to me, Jeremiah. It's a shoe manufacturer I used to know named Jeremiah. Okay, my friends, I won't be contemptuous. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. We have breaking news for you on the Savage Nation today. The Senate Democrat Socialist Islamist Bloc has blocked a Republican bill that would withhold funds to sanctuary cities that don't cooperate with federal immigration officials. Despite the fact that Kate Steinle was killed by Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez, who had been released by the city sheriff, Ross Murkikami, despite having a felony record and having been deported five times, he went and killed Kate Steinle. So the Republicans rightly heard the people, tried to pass a sanctuary city crackdown, but the corrupt Democrat Socialist Islamist bloc uh, blocked the GOP's sanctuary city crackdown. Now, in the last hour, I told you that it's all about the money. See, you don't understand it. Many of you think that the Democrats are in favor of immigrants because that they're better than the Republicans. They're kinder than the Republicans. It's all about the money. I showed you the billions that are being made in government zero. You see, you don't understand yet that it's all about the money. And by the way, there are people profiting on both sides of the aisle, as I showed you in my book, Government Zero. Very important that you know that the corruption is so endemic that it's spread across both sides of the aisle, more so on the Democrat Socialist side, by the way. And so that's breaking news. That's all. Sanctuary cities will stay. Now the Arab states on another front are pushing the U.N. to vote to get rid of the uh, wailing wall in Israel from Jews and give it to the Arabs. Now this is an amazing story. I know this doesn't really resonate with most of my listeners. Arab nations demand the U.N. designate the Western Wall as Muslim territory. This is such an important story. This is such an endeavor to distort history that I have to, I have to straighten the history out right now. Do you know what the Western Wall is? I'll never forget this. I went to Israel only twice in my life, and it was a long, long time ago. And I met some very brilliant scholars, the top of the heap, the most leading intellectuals in the country. And one of them asked me, what have you seen since you've been here? And I said, well, I've been at the Western Wall, I said proudly. He sneered at me. He said, ach, that's nothing. I said, what do you mean? He said, that's nothing. It's, he said, you should go above the Western Wall. And you will see the Temple Mount, which is the site of the Holy Jewish Temple. I, I didn't even understand the history myself at the time. The Western Wall that you see Jews praying at, where they put little prayers in paper, happens to be a remnant of a retaining wall which supported the Second Jewish Temple. 
And Jews are not allowed to pray on the Temple Mount. Not at all. Why? Because a long, long time ago, the Muslims conquered Jerusalem, knocked down the Jewish temple, the remnants of it, and built a, a holy uh, temple there for themselves and forbid Jews from praying up there. This is astounding to those of us who are not in this area. You want to rewrite history? Go ahead and re rewrite it. But that the, the mount of that area, the Temple Mount, is where the original holy temple was in Israel, the one you read about in the Bible. The Jews aren't allowed to pray. We're not allowed to pray there. So this is the world we're living in right now. <laughs> All under Hussein, al Husseini Obama. The smiling golfer from, well, you name the country of origin. The smiling golfer from fill in the blank. Indonesia, Honolulu, Kenya, we don't know. But it doesn't matter where he's from, we know where he wants to take us. That's all. So shall I give you more good news or take some calls? Question to you is, should America bring in more refugees from Syria, yes or no? Let me make it easy for you. Senators, presidents, all want us to take in 100,000 Syrian refugees. Should we do so? It's a simple question. That's all. Brendan, WABC, first caller of the day. Welcome to the program. Hi, how are you? Uh, I just sounds like to me like your book is going to light the left and the right on fire. I love that. Um, I am. I listen to you every day, and I am a Democrat because I'm a union member who wants Social Security, and my union is a solvent. But if I was rich, I'd be a staunch conservative. I think. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this, whatever you are, rich or poor, you're honest. <laughs> at yeah, least, you, admit, I at least you, you acknowledge what your politics are. They're based upon your pocketbook. I get it. That's very smart. That's that's the truth for most of us. I got to do what I got to do. When I was at my friend's house, her Hispanic grandmother, I whispered something about Savage in the background. It was a loud party. She turned around to me. She said, you listen to Michael Savage? I said, I listen every day. She said, I listen every day. And what'd you say? She's an Hispanic lady? She is. She is. She is. Yeah. Well, that's because that's because my view of the world is not much different from most sane people. Uh, let's believe, leave it at that. It's easy to typecast me, but it's very easy to, li to listen. It's very easy to typecast me if you don't listen to me. And it's easy to typecast me if you want to distort what I actually say. Okay, my friend, I'm sending you a gift. Government Zero goes out to you. Big, 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 big deal. It's a big deal to me. Book's coming out next Tuesday. I want you to mark it on your calendars, and I want you to go to the bookstores, and I want you to send a message to Washington. I want you to get that list onto the New York Times bestseller list so they read it. Do you realize what that means if this book winds up on the New York Times bestseller list, what the New York Times has to do? Remember what they did to me last time. My book made it to the list, and they didn't publish it. They left it out because they didn't want Countdown to Mecca to be on that list. Did you remember the novel? Do you remember what they did to me? Why? Because they didn't want the title Countdown to Mecca to be seen anywhere on the list. I didn't sue them. But the fact of the matter is, imagine this. Visualize this. Bestsellers, nonfiction. Michael Savage, Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture. The author argues that with the influx, the unlimited influx of refugees and immigrants, America will lose its identity. Do you think they want to publish even one line that states that? No, but you can make them do it because that's the book list that's read around the world. That's my appeal to you. I'm not going to buy a new car. I'm not going to buy a new house. I'm not building a beach house. I'm not furnishing a beach house. I'm not moving sand around on a beach. I'm not fortifying a house. I'm telling you right now, I'm past that point in my life. I don't need a house. I don't need a car. I don't need a vacation. I don't need a new pair of shoes. I don't need a new tuxedo. I don't need a haircut. I don't need my teeth done. I don't need my nails done. I need you to help stop the tide before we are swamped in it. I don't, know, I don't have any other way to do it. You know that all I have is my radio show and my writing. And my horoscope and my doctor have warned me I better slow down. By the way, I got to tell you that right now. I, I think I was getting over. I, I went over the edge. I felt it coming. I felt it coming. I felt it coming. And yesterday I hit a point in my show that I shouldn't have gone to. I think it was a brilliant show. It was great. I gave it my all. 
you know, but I reminded myself of what can happen when you when you give too much, whether it be.